wanted to make a quick video about a fighter out of Thailand who happens to be the WBC World Minimum Weight Champion, the 105 pound champion for the World Boxing Council, uh, by the name of Kayapan Munsi, aka Wenhang Manayoten. A lot more people will know him by the alias Wenhang Manayoten than by his birth name because, as I mentioned a couple of different times before, oftentimes fighters from Thailand will take on the names of either their gym, their sponsor, or exactly whomever, like basically their their biggest um, stakeholder, their biggest money holder, the guys that are really paying them the most, uh, as opposed to what their actual birth name is. A lot of that has to do with the historical thing, which is the fact that um, people in Thailand in general, not just fighters, but people in general, the populace of, of the country, didn't even have last names until I believe it was about 1910 or so. There's a bit of, bit of a history tidbit right there. Um, interesting, very interesting culture. Of course, you know, uh, people in Thailand are very, um, very fight heavy. You know, uh, very fight savvy. Uh, Muay Thai kickboxing, of course, is the national pastime, and professional boxing, you know, Western style boxing, is very much in keeping with that as well. You know, a, a fairly similar discipline in a lot of ways. <clears throat> Excuse me for that, but yeah just uh Manayoten, he's a fighter who is 44 and 0 with 17 knockouts right now he has a fight coming up on wednesday here on the 25th against melvin jerusalem of uh the philippines uh melvin jerusalem is a fighter that's only 11 and 0 with seven knockouts so you know he had a little bit of power uh, a little bit of a puncher but a guy that his overall record seems to pale in comparison to what wenheng is bringing to the table uh, but, you know, and especially because of the fact that Wenheng has fought a, pr a fr fair few um, pretty solid fighters along the way of becoming a champion and defending his titles. Um, most notably, I'd say his last fight, his most recent defense against Saul Juarez of Mexico, and his initial title victory over Oswaldo Novoa, who was the then champion uh, also of Mexico. Two really solid fighters, two of the, the better fighters at the lower weights um, over the last few years. And Wenheng has uh, done pretty well for himself. You know, of course, one of the interesting things is the fact that he is 44-0. Um, he, he, so, and also the fact that last year he fought four fights in a year. He's averaging about four fights a year. So if he was to continue his winning ways by the end of 2017, he'll be 48-0. And so he'll be knocking on the door of that illustrious number, the, you know, the, the Floyd Mayweather slash Rocky Marciano record of 49 and 0 may possibly even break it within the next year or year and a half considering how active he tends to be you know he's a very active fighter guy that has fought basically his entire career in thailand he hasn't fought outside of there and a lot of people will critique or criticize that a lot of that just has to do with money you know the, the biggest money at the lowest weights tends to be very insular and it tends to be primarily in japan but also in Thailand as well, because as I mentioned before, Thailand takes their fighting, just fighting sports in general, very, very seriously. Especially Muay Thai kickboxing and then followed immediately by boxing. Not even mixed martial arts is able to like, get any kind of like, real grasp over there the way that, that boxing is. Because for them, it's all about the striking. It's all about you know, putting hands or feet or elbows or knees on you you're like you know it's all about hard hits and doing damage you know so that's a big part of the reason why a lot of the fighters um they, they they come out very tough out of there a lot of times whenever we see a lot of the fighters from thailand on western stations and uh, in big fights um in front of in front of uh, western audiences english speaking audiences and such they tend to be very tough rugged fighters you know that are ready f to go to war at any and every time you know, I'd say probably the, the most notable name uh, at the higher weight classes uh, more recently, or at least the higher than flyweight classes, would have been uh, Tertek uh, Kokijin, who, of course, had the fight of the year candidate with, uh, or really the fight of the year winner back in, what was it, 2013 or 2014 against Orlando Salido. F incredible fight. That's like one of those fights you got to show people to show them exactly why you like boxing because it was nothing but just brutality, sheer brutality from both of them. Um, you know, the, 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 one of the few guys to really do serious damage to Cito and like have him reeling on a, at, in a couple of moments. Just a tough, gritty fighter. Um, and Minayotin is very much the same. Although Minayotin, I think, has a lot more boxing skill. He definitely boxes on a higher level than the likes of Turtzak. 
Um, but yeah, Man uh, Wen Heng, uh, I'll, I'll try to call him Van Heng um, as opposed to Man Then it's easier to say. Within the next uh, year, year and a half, he may be able to knock on and even surpass that record. Even before, you know, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez uh, does. You know, and, uh, a lot of people make a big deal about Gonzalez's record. It seems like a lot of people try to hate on Gonzalez because of the fact that he might actually be the one to break that, to actually break that record. Although, you know, the Floyd Mayweather has been talking about the whole comeback fight, and possibly fighting Conor McGregor, so he may beat everybody to it himself, you know. And I, I'd imagine that that is a, in part why he kind of um, hints and puts out little tidbits about that possible fight with, um, with McGregor as well, just because of the fact that I think he, he wants to be the one ultimately to break that record, um, even if it's going to be against basically a novice in terms of boxing stature. You know, a guy that he'll probably be very easily beat up, school, and probably knock out even, you know, and just you know, take advantage of the lack of uh, going the, the distance in boxing and the, the, the different stamina base that's required for boxing as opposed to MMA. Um, but should he not happen to do that or not happen to do that anytime soon, it's entirely possible that um, Munsi, a.k.a. Wenheng, could potentially break either the 49-0 or even the 50-0 that Floyd were to potentially put up if he was to fight Conor McGregor. You know, or even break whatever record Roman Gonzalez puts up. You know, I've mentioned a couple of times in the past that Roman Gonzalez at 115 pounds is really playing with fire. He's definitely playing with fire in his next fight against Sisa Kitsa Rungvasai. You know, a fighter that... Um, that is just a brutal puncher, a brutal body puncher. You know, he scored a, probably one of the knockouts of the year last year uh, when he he hit a guy with a body shot, made him vomit all over the damn ring. <laughs> I mean, that's something that you don't see every day. That's like some once-in-a-lifetime uh, type things that, that goes on with uh, some, you, you hit somebody with a body shot and they're TKO'd by vomit, by, by a Mises, man, by, <laughs> by coughing up lungs and stuff. It's crazy. Um, but I mean, yeah, you, you got him against uh, against Cesar Kett, and then if he beats Cesar Kett, he's gonna wind up having to fight uh, Carlos Quadras uh, once again in order to get to the 48 no mark, you know. And then after that, um, you know, now you know, and Juan Francisco Estrada loom, you know. So to get to that 49 and then that 50, he's gonna have an extremely tough road ahead of him, an extremely tough road, you know. He has. Guys with uh, plenty of skills, guys with power, guys with speed, guys with um, athleticism, and the whole nine. Just guys, guys that are the, really the total package of super flyweight uh, that, that are ready to, you know, basically be a pothole for his uh, road onto um, breaking records. You know, whereas with uh, Wenhen, he has a slightly clearer road. You know, he doesn't even necessarily have to, to come outside of Thailand or have to, to unify in order to get there. He, he isn't. Um, being pushed necessarily like that although I would like to see him push like that you know I definitely want to see some unifications to me unifications in every division or, or sh should be what we are rooting for by and large or at least at the very least um, the best fighting the best and at 105 pounds I do feel that the best fighters are the ones that hold the belts at the moment uh, you got him you got Jose Argumedo you have Katsunari Takayama of Japan although I put Takayama on a lower level than Argumedo since Argumedo actually defeated him um, what was that, about a year and a half to two years ago? And then also, um, Knockout CP Freshmont. Uh, Knockout CP Freshmont, of course, uh, the, another fighter from Thailand. That could be a, a pretty good fight, a really good unification, probably for pretty good money over in Thailand. Although they tend not to really do too many unifications over there when it's a uh, Thai fighter versus Thai fighter necessarily. Um, but Knockout CP Freshmont was the first unified and actually like undisputed, basically. Muay Thai kickboxing champion as well. So he's kind of broke that tradition himself. So it's very possible that we could see him try to break that tradition once again and try and um, really take over at the 105-pound weight class in, in boxing as well. As for um, Wenheng, though, it, I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt his chances against any of those guys. Uh, absolutely not. Um, the one guy that I'd probably give the best chance of actually beating Wenheng would be... Um, Jose Argomedo himself, uh, he's a fighter, of course, he's now kind of uh, co-promoted by Golden Boy, uh, managed by 
Uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez is the uh, same manager, so he may be able to get a little bit of uh, shine down on the, the very lowest weight class uh, as far as that's concerned. Who knows, maybe he can even be a part of the Canelo versus Chavez Jr. pay-per-view that's coming up. That'd be, that'd be pretty interesting. It'd be uh, fun to, to see him really show what the, the little guys have got. You know, he's a fun fighter to watch, solid fighter. And I think he's probably the biggest threat to Wen Hang's um, overall dominance of the 105-pound weight class and also of his ability to break those records, as I mentioned before. Um, you know, Wen Hang is only 31, so he's pretty much smack dab right in his prime. You know, he's, he just won the title a couple of years ago, and um, he's definitely still growing. You know, I think he's improved over the last couple of years as he's become a champion. He's um, really grown into and come into his own as a, as a champion. Um, to me, like he's probably the classiest boxer of the bunch at 105. And uh, honestly, I think it's really going to take uh, just a, a supreme talent in order to defeat him. I think it probably would have taken somebody like Akose Tanaka, who's already, moved, who's already moved up out of the division, in order to defeat somebody like him. You know, like I think um, he'll probably reign down there for a, a good little while. And um, I could definitely see him send some records. And maybe by way of doing that, he'll be able to get some more attention on the lowest weight class. And maybe uh, we could potentially see him stateside. Um, although, as I mentioned before, him versus Argomedo, I think would be a uh, very compelling fight, a fantastic fight. And I think it'd definitely be worthy of, um, you know, just even if being like a co-feature, a co-feature on maybe one of these HBO cards with uh, Francisco Vargas or uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez or something like that, since they have a Golden Boy connection. Something like that, man. Um, or even like boxing after dark or something. But to me, a lot of these fights um, at the lower weight classes can provide fantastic value for money. You don't necessarily have to, you know, come out of pocket in a major way to get these guys more money than what they've been seeing normally. Um, you know, like low six figure stuff is ten, tends to be, I think, the par for course in a lot of these fights, and not even that in many cases as well. Um, although Wen Heng uh, is a pretty has a draws a pretty damn solid fan base in Thailand in a major way. You know, his his fans are pretty rabid. Um, him and Knockout Sibi Freshman's fans are fairly rabid. But just wanted to shine a little bit of a light on him. Um, I am gonna do a post fight review on his fight with Melvin Jerusalem coming up, coming up on Wednesday. So uh, just look out for that. And I think that's probably gonna do it for me on uh, Kayapan Munsi, aka Wenhang Manayoten. 44 0 with 17 knockouts. And he's uh, trying to knock on the door of uh, breaking some records and achieving some greatness for the, uh, the smallest weight classes, man. Trying to do something similar to what Ricardo Lopez did, uh, retired at 51 0 and 1, and what Ivan Calderon did, who um, was having a hellacious undefeated run and made it into the pound for pound ranks before eventually he ran up against Giovanni Segura and uh, his. Uh, Overall viability at the top level was effectively ended right there. Uh, when will Wenheng's overall viability effectively end? We don't quite know yet, um, but I'd definitely like to see him truly tested against the likes of the fighters that I mentioned before. Um, Jose Argomedo, maybe Carlos Buitrago, uh, you know, uh, like CP Freshmart, and even Katsunari Takayama himself as well. A uh, lot, of, lot of good fighters at these underrated weight classes. And um, Kayapon, I think, is uh, overall the best of the bunch. So that's all I got to say about that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.